This is Retro Hammer, Death Eagles from 1989 and the road to Mark VII Aquila armour. Space Marines are visually defined by their armour, be it powered, tactical dreadnought or terminator and the true dreadnoughts such as a Castrophelum and Contemptor patterns. All of these mark Adeptus Astartes out as the elite of the Emperor's vast and inexhaustible armies. Of these different types of personal protection, it is a powered armour that is most immediately recognisable, and there are a number of distinct designs of armour that began, began with the pointed helm of the original Sp Imperial Space Marine from 1985. However, for almost the entire history of a Warhammer 40,000 game, one variant of armour alone has become the visual motif of the Adeptus Astartes, Mark VII or Aquila armour. Be it Warhammer 40,000 miniatures, official artwork, computer games such as the RTS Dawn of War or third-person Space Marine, Astartes nearly always wear Mark VII. It is so ubiquitous that to even think of a Marine is to imagine a warrior clad in this distinctive armoured suit. However, in the early days of Warhammer 40,000, Mark VII armour did not exist and Space Marines wore the same armour as depicted in the cover art of the Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader rulebook. This suit had no specific name at the time and was simply known as Powered Armour, although it was later to become known as Mark VI or the Corvus suit. This central visual depiction of Marines was not to last for more than the first few years from the game's release before being radically changed. In the early months of 1989, a set of three Metal Space Marines was released by Citadel Miniatures that were visually different from those that had preceded them, the Death Eagles. The pointed helm was replaced by a shorter, grilled design, and this brutal visage gave them a visual menace not previously demonstrated, a design cue stating the fearsome nature of these warriors to parallel their in-game performance. Other common changes in design were also present, such as heavier chest armour and rim shoulder pads. Many variations were also present between these three Death Eagles, with different leg armour designs, cabling variations, and eagle insignia placement. At the time these three models were something of an oddity and apart from two or two other less distinct miniatures released later in 1989 they remained the only examples of their type for almost two years. This changed in October 1990 with the release of a new box set the Space Marine Strike Force RTB-15. This introduced the first Mark VII armour models, a style of armour that remains recognisable to this day. It was only at this point that it became clear that the Death Eagles were, an early, were early design explorations of what Mark VII armour would ultimately become that would define the Warhammer 40,000 universe. So, thank you very much for joining me for this latest episode of Retro Hammer. And in this, uh, I'm going to explore the origins of Mark VII powered armour through looking at, through an, an unboxing, uh, an examination of a Space Marine pack uh, from 1989. And uh, here we have one. So this is a, a quite an early style blister. Um, it's, not the, it's not the earliest style blister, which had like a back, like a star background. Um, and the motif from Warhammer 40,000 rulebook, but this was a fairly early one, and the price point, £2.50 for the Death Eagles, um, is still at the original sort of price that was being charged for the Marines at their, uh, when Rogue Trader first came out. Um, yes, yeah, so there's three, three metal models in here, a set of plastic backpacks and slotter bases. Uh, this pack's a, ooh, well, for something that was only probably designed to last a year or two, I guess it's, uh, it's survived over 25 years, so it's not done too bad. Um, and then just a bit of bump, which had a, a bit of description about the game, and you can see the edge, because it's uh, here it's showing the minery miniature being placed into a square base. Yeah, and uh, what's the year on this? 1988, I think that's the pack design, as opposed to the actual miniatures. So yeah, so uh, I've recently acquired these guys. Um, I, I bought these when they originally came out uh, back in the day, but this is a, this is like my second visitation of these guys, shall we say. Um, this pack's not in great nick, so uh, I don't think there's any great loss in uh, taking these guys out. And I've, uh, I've got an idea how I'm going to use them in my force. But anyway, let's uh, let's let's open up this pack uh, and get a look inside. I have to do this carefully. 
we can take these guys out and I can keep the blister. So here we go. Here is the first of the Death Eagles Marines. So these are all sculpted by Mark Copplestone, uh, who did a lot of the early metal models uh, for Warhammer, for, uh, early Space Marine metal models for Warhammer 40,000. And yeah, I mean, you can see straight away they were, when they called them Death Eagles, it, it wasn't, they weren't joking. There was a um, eagle there on the buckle, shall we say, uh, one on his forehead. Uh, and then a more complex eagle, well, like a full-size eagle design, uh, on a shoulder. And then he's carrying one of the original design plasma guns. So yeah, nice model. And of course, as I said, you know, this is a very different armor design to what to the Beaky Marines or you know, the Space Wombles who we've talked, who have been in previous retro hammers. Um, and yeah, so we now have this this visually brutal-looking short helm so it's a, the helmet's similar in its overall design apart from the the noses in effect the nose is being chopped off of the the beaky marine and turned into this grip this uh grimmest grill and it certainly looks menacing doesn't it there's more design changes which we'll look at later as we get out the next guys so here we go death eagle marine number two this was a this guy was my original favorite of the of the three and and this shows very nicely the next set of design changes so firstly we have um, separate knee pads so you have a, a greave a knee pad and then an, uh, a thigh plate you can see here it's got like these cabling sections at the rear of the armor we can clearly see the chest plate so unlike the original mark six marines we have a an enclosed chest plate here um, with some cables running up it again um, the grilled helmet design although this one's again is slightly different to the first guy one of the things I love about these Death Eagles is how much variety there is this guy's got these big heavy cables I mean it always looks like a, a diving rebreather whereas this chap's got small cabling uh, and his whatever this sensor unit or this um, data collector is that runs on the top of the helmet is slightly offset uh, to uh, to one side as was the case with the um, original mark sixes uh, there um, theirs were always offset to one side and uh, we can see that with a quick little comparison here's a forge world mark six but yeah so yeah another and again yeah his his is this guy's is central so this guy uh, I look you know this guy's got a power glove on known as a power fist these days you can see the the rimmed shoulder pad again here uh, another eagle motif on his shoulder pad uh, he's got a a bolt gun you know obviously you know being a marine not just a power glove but you know why not why not stick a, a combat accessory on that bolt gun as well and then you've got cabling that runs up, sort of around to his back where uh, that would sort of you imagine that would link into his backpack. Lovely model. When uh, in the original White Dwarf, I'll show you a picture later. These guys were painting their crazy um, purple white alternating quadrants paint scheme, which uh, I remember painting at the time and uh, was quite challenging. And here is the third of the Death Eagle Marines. Oops, that's a little bit uh, just a little bit bent. Let's see if we can carefully. Put that back. I mean, these are all lead alloy miniatures, and they're not uh, they're not pewter models. Um, the, these were made before the legislation was passed around uh, banning lead in any products that children um, or younger people might have access to. Although that legislative change was nothing to do with really actual risk from these models. It was uh, it was falling on from the effects of using leaded petrol uh, and the tremendous health impacts we have but that's a that's a story for uh, someone else on another day anyway yeah here we go so yet another design another variation on the design so this guy has got different slight you know he doesn't have the cabling at the back of his shoulder of his greaves he has again separate knee pads but a different design of knee pad um he has a a chest pauldron and on that chest um is a large imperial aquila um, 
another design of shoulder pad again this one's not fully rimmed it has a plate on it but it's kind of like got this van brace at the top it's got some sort of device on the end of his bolt gun perhaps I don't know maybe a suppressor or something who knows uh, and then he has this uh, this <coughs> shoulder eagle design now these uh, I, I don't know quite where um what this was for but it does for those of you who are familiar with 2000 AD and the Judge Dredd comics, this bears more than a passing resemblance to um, the shoulder pads of the judges, and I wonder if it was a little nod to those guys. And then this helmet. Yet another design. So the, this time the cabling works its way all the way around into the back of the helmet and, and not connecting onto sort of side attachments that this guy does. Um, but the cabling is less prominent than on the original plasma gunner that I showed you. And then there's kind of like, there's, there's ridges on the armour, as well as the rimming. So, yeah, I mean, so he's, you know, he's got the truncated grilled helmet again. And this time, the sensor is of a stand, like a, a clean design, but it looks centrally mounted. So you get another variation. So all across these Death Eagles, um, there's lots of different designs, design cues. So there's common themes, but lots of different variations. And I think there's another one. So here, the, there's a plate on the back of the normal armored gauntlet. Whereas on this guy, it's uh, like a, looks more like the back of a, an armored glove and less like a plate. So yeah, another, another variation on the design. A slightly different cabling as well on the side. Right, well, let's um, let's bob these guys in some bases, uh, just for uh, to continue on. But yeah, so the these guys, yeah, it was a three. You know, as I've shown you here, these are exactly as they came at the time. Um, when they popped up, they were a bit of a something of an oddity, as I said in the introduction, um, and they didn't really. They were great miniatures and they looked really good, but they didn't really fit with uh, anything, any art or anything that had been done at the time. It was just, you know, you bought, I, I bought them as extra guys to uh, have in my force. It, it only became clear later as to the significance of these, of what these guys represented in terms of marine design evolution. So let's uh, <coughs> see if we can... Uh, now, if I get this right, we should have somewhere to stand these guys. There we go. There we go. So the three Death Eagles. Um, right. So in the um, in the original, these were first uh, made an appearance in White Dwarf One Twelve, and uh, I suppose better just flick back. Um, and that was the original um, catalogue page in the White Dwarf, and that came at the same time as these Terminators. Uh, interesting moment just to think about the design origin of these truncated helmets. Um, the Type 3 Terminator Marine, this guy, um, which was sculpted by Jez Goodwin, um, he had a helmet similar to what these guys got, the, the sort of grilled face. I wonder if this served as an inspiration to Mark Copplestone to sculpt these guys. And we can, in this picture, this was the, from, I think, what was this, White Dwarf 110, uh, where again we've got the Type 3 Terminator. You can see this helmet here, and it's very similar to what the helmet of the Death Eagles was like. And while it was abandoned for Terminator armor, I wonder if that uh, was picked up to use um, on these Marines. Um, a little bit later that year, so White Dwarf 118 time, uh, two of the sets of Marine models were released. Um, the first was Space Marines with Terminator on us. And we can see here this third guy, armed with a bolt gun, has got yet another truncated helmet design. There's also a set of models um, called the Librarians. And again, one of these Librarians, although the, sorry about the quality of the photocopy, but um, we can see again that he's got this truncated helmet design. So. A little bit later in the year, this was being played with again. Uh, although, here's a blown up version of the uh, Terminator on this guy. We can see that this is less radical than the Death Eagles because um, he's got normal Mark VI legs. 
he's got Mark VI cabling on his torso and he's got Mark VI style shoulder pads, so there's no um, no rimming on those. No rims around those shoulder pads, but he does have the grilled helmet. So a few, there were a few experiments going on with the look of the Marines at that time. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, however, nothing, not much else happened with these guys for a few years. Um, and it was only later on, I believe in 1990, um, when an article was run in The White Dwarf, which actually for the first time talked about the evolution of Space Marine power armor. Uh, and to those of us who were around at the time, that was a, it was a very well-known article and it appeared <coughs> in White Dwarf 1. <coughs> one two nine. Now here we've got a copy of the Index Astartes Apocrypha, uh, and I'll just bob that down. See if we can do a little bit of work on the camera angle. So this is the article, uh, one of forty thousand Space Marine Arm, described by Rick Priestley. Uh, yeah, White Dwarf one two nine. So nineteen ninety. We're on now, um, and and this article covered everything from what was Mark I all the way through um, to Mark VII armour. And here was the original sketch of Mark VII armour. Uh, this was by, <coughs> excuse me, John Blanche, <coughs> these little sketches. Um, and then we have a, another picture of that style armour. This, art, this artwork here, um, Artwork like that appeared on the Epic Space Marine game box set um, earlier. Although at that time, it just appeared to be, um, you know, another piece of art. There was no real models to go alongside it. Uh, however, the month after White Dwarf, the armor article in White Dwarf came along, um, then a new box set was released, which I talked about, which I mentioned in the intro. Uh, and that is RTB um, 15. So let's, those of you who are around at the time, you may remember this. But yeah, here is the cover art from the Space Marine Strikes Force. This pitch was originally on the Space Marine Epic game, if I remember rightly. It's quite interesting that this guy down in the corner has got this plasma gun, a little bit like uh, one of the first Death Eagle we looked at. And the Space Marine Strike Force introduced, for the first time, Mark VII Aquila armour in the way that we all recognise it today. Um, so this is 15 models, uh, metal models uh, with plastic arms and backpacks and weapons. So they, they were multiple, multiposable of sorts. Um, yeah, and this is, I can remember getting this at the time, this is very exciting and interesting, uh, the designer. So the designer here is Jez Goodwin. Jez Goodwin was almost like the man who designed the visual look of the Marines, <coughs> and 40K to a great degree. Uh, he designed Mark VII Aquila armor, he designed the Terminators, he designed the Castroferrum Dreadnought, uh, and he also designed the Land Raider as well. So yeah, more per perhaps more than any one person, barring maybe John Blanche, someone who visually influenced 40k so yeah so that was the space marine strike force um and i'm fortunate enough if i just get this camera back um i still have a handful of well i still have a handful of models from the the original um space marine strike force i bought uh, many years ago and i thought it'd be nice if we now compare those to the death eagles so, let me, I'll tell you what, let's uh, see if we can make a bit of room. <coughs> right, there we go. So on the end, we have um, a model from the uh, Space Marine Strike Force. Let's see if we can uh, get a closer up on him. There we go. Now, I only kept, I only got two of the original poses. Yeah, but you can see you've got the um, the plastic plastic arms, um, you know, plastic arms, weapons, and backpack. 
armor design. So we've we've now got clear, distinct shoulder pads. Um, a chest plate, armored cabling running up from the belt to the chest plate, uh, the rimmed edge shoulder pad pads, uh, and then the kind of clean armor design on the hands. So looking at this guy, we can see that a variety of features and characteristics were brought through into this final model from those three original Death Eagles uh, by Mark Copplestone. Um, now on this guy, you'll probably have noticed he hasn't got an eagle on his chest. Uh, and that was due to some conversion work I did. Um, I, uh, back in the day, I used a load of these models for a game, for a game that me and a friend wrote, uh, as something, and I didn't want them to look like Marines with the Imperial Insignia on, so I've got a whole load of these guys that I, uh, I can't remember how long I spent doing it, but I took all the Aquilas off them, as you can see. Um, so, yeah, ironically, the uh, the Aquila armor Marine with no Aquila here, but um, he is. this is one of that original Space Marine Strike Force, one of the original Mark 7s. Uh, and let's just put one more guy on there for comparison. There you go. So yeah, so uh, I think in general the the armor design of the Death Eagles got cleaned up uh, for the Mark Seven Marine, um, but the fundamentals of these three models, which was the truncated helmet with the grill, the central um, sort of sensor array. Um, the the pauldron, the chest pauldron with the eagle on it was kept. Um, yeah. Oh, and of course the separately articulated knee pads as well, and was also retained. And if we um, make one final comparison, now I don't, I I hardly have any up to date Mark Seven Marines, but I've just got one, and this is this is uh, just something that I made as a comedy bit of a comedy model at a uh, um, a Warhammer Open, I think I was there with my daughter, uh, it was like a build build whatever you want competition, so uh, anyway, I, I had a little bit of fun with this guy, but um, and here is a an up-to-date Space Assault Marine in Mark VII armour, and we can see, you know, the, just like these original Strike Force Marines, the armour design is essentially unchanged. Obviously, this he's an assault marine, um, so he's wearing a jump pack. But fortunately, I haven't got any. Uh, I don't have many marks. Any other marks to compare with? But yeah, yeah. So the, so yeah. So those those guys were pretty much it. There was one um, one sort of as a little after note in terms of what the about the origins of marine armor. Um, Nothing. The, these kind of like Death Eagles were a one-off. They never. They didn't really make an appearance again. Um, and you know, with the with the appear, you know, once the Jez Goodwin Mark Sons came along, that was you know that was a look and that was a dominant appearance for Marines for for then on in. However, there's one of the little design cue that I wonder might have been an influence, and you can see and you know, it sees knee pads on on Death Eagle three. We see the sort of separate knee pads are fairly they're sort of squared off at the edges. I wonder if they were the inspiration for Mark IV Maximus armor knee pads. And and here we have a here we've got a Mark IV Marine. Oops, a little bit close to the camera. There we go. This is a, an iron hand armed with the awesome rotor cannon. But yeah, we can see we've got these squared off separate knee pads. I just wonder if that's if that's where they came from, this uh, one of the weird and wonderful Death Eagles. But yeah, so there you have it. Um, Death Eagle Space Marines, um, the precursors to the 
now ubiquitous Mark VII armour. And with the appearance of Mark VII armour in 1990, that was pretty much the end of the road for Space Marine armour design evolution. Um, the only thing that was to follow was uh, what's called uh, Mark VIII errant armour, which only a handful of models have specifically appeared. Um, and even that was only a minor change on, uh, on Mark VII. And it's never become a fully adopted thing. So yeah, so Mark VII is... Uh, is the ubiquitous marine armour now. Yeah, and these three guys, the Death Eagles, sculpted by Mark Copplestone, um, where those design, where that design first got explored. Thank you very much for watching. This was Retro Hammer. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye. <laughs>